fun on this, but it's actually surprising that among all the Looney Tunes crew, there isn't a lot of diversity. Sure, you have a French skunk, a Tasmanian eating machine, and bugs would travel around the world by taking the wrong turn at Albuquerque, but among all the characters, most of them are American. They don't have one that proudly represents other countries. This is where a mouse would come in. Instead of glorifying the United States, this one is regarded as one of the most beloved mascots of the country under the US. Regarded as the fastest mouse of all of Mexico, this is Speedy Gonzales. Of course, as the quickest mouse from the south of the border, he does have notoriety as the rodent who is qualified to bring food to his people by getting past America's security and supply them with all the cheese they could eat. Although the character himself was credited to be made by Bob McKimson, it was actually Frizz Freeling who shaped him up to be the mouse we all remember. Allow me to explain. You see, in his first cartoon on August 29th, 1953, Cat Tales for Two, McKimson Speedy looked like this. Adios, senors. Hey, yay, yay! Not really the sombrero wearing mouse you'd expect now, is it? But as you could tell, this version of Speedy is known to be a prototype. So, two years later, when the character was now given to Freeling, he and animator Howley Pratt decided to give him a complete makeover. Get rid of those giant teeth and the golden one, redo his hair, give him some white attire, a red bandana, and a nice sombrero, and you get a brand spanking new Mexican mouse, ready for his next cartoon simply called Speedy Gonzales, where he has to get some American cheese over the guard at the border, played by Sylvester. The cartoon ended up being such a smash hit that it actually ended up winning the Academy Award, which Speedy would later earn two additional nominations with 1957's Tabasco Road and 1961's The Pied Piper of Guadalupe. Throughout the Looney Tunes Golden Age, Sylvester would be Speedy's regular rival whenever he needs a break from Tweety. However, Speedy wouldn't be alone on his adventures. In the 1959 tune, Mexicali Schmoes, his cousin, Slowpoke Rodriguez, came into the scene. But he was actually so slow that he couldn't even catch up with the amount of tunes that Speedy has, only appearing in Mexicali Schmoes and the 1962 Mexican Borders. After the Golden Age, Speedy would later be appearing in more cartoons, this time with Daffy Duck as his new foe, starting with 1965's It's Nice to Have a Mouse Around the House all the way up to his last cartoon in 1968 with See You Later Gladiator, making a total of 46 cartoons featuring the Mexican mouse. As for his partnership with Daffy, the last time the two would be together would be in the compilation feature film Daffy Duck's Fantastic Island, where Speedy would play a parody of the Fantastic Island character Tattoo. Look boss, the plane, the plane! When the new millennium would be around the corner, things began to be a bit complicated for Speedy. Like, it was questionable if even he could run his way out of this one. When Cartoon Network got the exclusive rights to the Looney Tunes, they refused to show the Speedy Gonzales cartoons because they feared that they might be considered offensive. Even Cartoon Network spokeswoman Lori Goldberg stated that it hasn't been on the air for years because of its ethnic stereotypes. But here's the catch. They did this because of assumptions. Did anyone actually get offended by these cartoons? Of course not! In fact, Latin Americans consider Speedy a beloved character. Even the League of United Latin American Citizens named him a cultural icon. Because of many campaigns done by fans and Hispanic Americans, it left Cartoon Network no choice but to re-air the Speedy cartoons in 2002. This little incident will remain in the record books as one of the many examples of how Americans feel the need to be offended about a social issue in pop culture that the people who should be offended directly are perfectly fine with it. Americans, let us be offended for you. May come in different flavors, but would most likely be vanilla. With that said though, Warner Brothers is still taking a bit of a precaution in case anyone would get offended. On the DVD and Blu-ray releases of the Looney Tunes Golden and Platinum Collection, 
The disc would start with a disclaimer that would say, the cartoons you are about to see are a product of their time. They may depict some of the ethnic and racial prejudices that were commonplace in American society. These depictions were false then, and they are still false today. While the following does not represent the WB's view on society, these cartoons are being presented as they were originally created, because to do otherwise would be the same as to claim these prejudices never existed. But rather it be through his many appearances in many different platforms, or how people are still cruising to the 1962 Pat Boone Top 10 hit song based on the character, we will always remember him as the fastest mouse in all of Mexico. Grab your sombreros, amigos. Here we go again. <laughs> See ya, see ya, see ya, see ya later, dudes!